Welcome to Module 3 on Supercells and Accessory Cloud Types. Here we're going to look at the classic depiction of a supercell thunderstorm. And the left side of the screen would be the southwest portion of the storm with the right side being the northeast portion. So we can see our updraft here uh, tilted to the right and moving upwards. And that's tilted due to what we call vertical wind shear in the atmosphere, which is the change in wind speed and direction with height. And basically the more of that you have, the stronger your supercell can become, the longer um, it can maintain itself and survive. And then another good indication of the strong updraft is above um, what well, we can see that anvil there. Above that we get what you can call an overshooting top. And that's basically air punching into a stable layer of the atmosphere known as the stratosphere, which is above where we live, um, that being the troposphere. And now we get the downdraft portion of the supercell, which is to the right here in this image, or to the northeast side of the classic supercell. And this is the rain-cooled air that's descending um, throughout the layers of the atmosphere. And down at the ground, um, this is where we would be getting our heavy rain and or hail falling beneath the downdraft of the storm. And what really helps the supercell maintain itself here is that the updraft and the downdraft are separate. So you have the warm moist air rising into the updraft and then the cool rain cooled air and the downdraft actually separated from that warm moist air. So again here would be uh, might look like an ominous appearance in the sky but um, your heavy rain and or hail uh, falling out of this. And then as we'll get into a little bit later you might also get um, an accessory cloud type known as a shelf cloud on the leading edge of the storm. So when out spotting storms in the field, the area we want to look for for the action um, in the lower part of the storm, the most dangerous area, is going to be between this updraft and downdraft interface. So with a supercell thunderstorm, we have a rotating updraft, and that's due to that vertical wind shear we discussed a little bit earlier. So toward the southwest side of the storm and underneath that rotating updraft is where we're going to have a rain-free base because again the rain-cooled air is separate in the downdraft portion of the storm which is located farther to the northeast. So if that updraft can rotate enough and strengthen and um, tighten that's where we're going to get a wall cloud would be underneath that which is a lowering from that rain-free base and then if one does develop a tornado is going to occur underneath the wall cloud if that wall cloud can gather enough rotation and again not all wall clouds uh, even rotating wall clouds or supercells produce tornadoes but if a tornado does occur it's going to be underneath of this wall cloud feature. So we wanted to show you the classic radar depiction of what a supercell thunderstorm would look like and this is looking at base reflectivity data. So the warmer colors um, toward the oranges and reds that's where you've got the heavier rainfall and or hail falling with this supercell and that corresponds to what we were looking at earlier being on the northeast side of the storm where the downdraft region is located. And then as we work back toward the west and southwest portions of the storm, we get this distinct what we call hook echo. And the reason for that is again our updraft is rotating in the thunderstorm. So where we have that lack of any reflectivity data showing up uh, denoted by the gray on the image there in the very very light blues. This is actually where that updraft is located, so our rain-free base is in this area, and all the rain and uh, hail with this storm is being wrapped around the backside. And if we do have a tornado uh, out of one of these supercells, it's going to be on that south flank there of the hook echo. And in this example, you can see it very well by that one uh, little red reflectivity pixel. And this is actually due to a tornado on the ground lofting debris into the air and that debris is being picked up on by the radar. So even though we have a very good depiction of a tornado likely on the ground here looking at radar data, we can't for sure tell that there is one on the ground without hearing from you out in the field as our spotters. Um, just as important or more important than having radar data here in the office. So please don't hesitate to call if you see a feature in the field even with a radar signature like this and also important to note that not all tornadoes are sampled this well by radar data. Throughout the next couple of slides we're going to look at the supercell storm from three basic uh, viewpoints. 
the first one being from far back say 20 miles or so from the storm uh, and then the second one being um, about 10 to 20 miles so kind of a mid-range and then the third uh, range being that bottom portion there denoted by the red box uh, being close into the storm so say less than 10 miles and features to look for uh, with when then within those distances so from farther out about 20 miles or more from the storm we want to look for a persistent overshooting top so you can see that on the top left image there that's indicative of a very strong updraft into the thunderstorm and then a broad um, thick anvil and the anvil is that flat um, almost looks like a flying saucer type of uh, object at the top portions of the storm just below that shooting top and if we have that anvil growing um, back against the upper level winds um, most likely toward the west or southwest and get what we call back shearing and we also know we have a very strong updraft pushing that air um, back against that upper level wind flow and then also want to look for crisp and hard outline edges to the clouds as opposed to a soft and mushier type appearance. Getting into the medium range of the storm, say 10 or 20 miles away, we want to start to look for some uh, crisp or cauliflower-like um, edges to the updraft. So um, indicating that it's very strong and got um, very hard, well-defined edges to it. And then also looking for a circular updraft base um, that may have some smooth sides on it, so kind of like indentations into the sides of um, your rotating updraft. And again, focusing on the medium range here, um, you can see those striations uh, denoted in the uh, middle and upper levels of the uh, supercell here. And then you can also get a flared out or more of a bell-shaped um, type updraft uh, column when looking at the storm from the mid-range here and then you can see in the lower portions of the storm that circular updraft base. And then when you're within very close proximity to the storm, so say within 10 miles, um, you want to locate that rain-free base. So um, again, the bottom portions of the supercell as you're working in on it. And look in on the action area, which is again that area between the updraft and the downdraft interface. So look for any um, circular motion or rotation of the clouds in that area and for any additional lowering and rotation associated with that lowering that may be occurring. And then also you're going to start to feel the inflow winds into the updraft so those winds should be um, increasing and picking up in intensity um, as you get closer and closer to the storm and a signal that the storm is intensifying in strength. And the supercell here again at close range so we can see where we've got our updraft indicated by the rain-free base toward the southwest side of the storm and then the downdraft as you move toward the northeast portions of the storm. So here's our axis showing the interface of that updraft and uh, downdraft so that action area there right in the middle and then we would have inflow winds um, say at least 15, um, 20 or more miles an hour moving um, from the south into that area of the uh, storm into the updraft. And again, your updraft is going to be where you're warm and moist and unstable areas. Focusing now on wall clouds, they're defined as a compact lowering that's attached to the updraft. So again, where that rain-free base is, uh, that portion of the supercell, and it forms within the inflow region to the updraft. So that's where we've got our warm, moist, and unstable air pumping into the storm and feeding into it. And they may or may not rotate. Uh, most of them do not end up rotating. But if they do, and they do this um, consistently and show persistence in their rotation, that really does um, suggest an increased um, likelihood for tornadoes to occur. And a feature you may see, um, if looking with the storm um, to the southwest being our left again and the northeast being the right, a tail cloud may feed off from the downdraft portions of the storm on the northeast side, kind of into that uh, wall cloud there on the right or again the northeast portion of the supercell. This is a time lapse of a wall cloud up close and you can see the well-defined rotation within it and even at points some uh, dirt or debris being picked up 
by the strong rotation and uh, winds associated with this underneath of the feature. The next type of cloud we'll look at is called a shelf cloud. So this is a broad cloud lowering that forms along the outflow or the gust front portion of a thunderstorm. And what's happening here is you're getting that warm moist air drawn up over top of your shelf cloud into the updraft portion of the storm and then the cool downdraft air is actually undercutting that on the bottom side so that's why it looks kind of shredded and uh, wind torn but they're commonly along the leading edge of a squall line of thunderstorms and they precede strong or damaging winds immediately behind them so comparing a shelf cloud against a wall cloud uh, we'll start with shelf clouds they indicate outflow so from the downdraft and uh, rain or hail cooled portion of the storm and their slope is roughly parallel to the precipitation and also they move away from that precipitation as they uh, move along in time as opposed to wall clouds which indicate inflow into them and they tend to slope upward and away from the precipitation and they tend to stay fixed in position relative to the precipitation so looking for some visual evidence of rotation uh, it's hard to do from a still photograph a little easier in real time out in the field but here we can see those mid-level striations in the midsections of the supercell here um, likely indicating rotation and then in the distance um, almost in the dead um, center bottom portion of the picture you can see what looks like a wall cloud lowering and then maybe a funnel cloud underneath of that and then if we look here um, not really any signs of visual rotation again hard to tell from a still photograph but you can see rain um, hitting the ground and being kicked up likely with some dirt and debris as well so no real signs of rotation here but uh, nonetheless strong winds being kicked out underneath the downdraft portion of the storm we'll wrap up here with three images and try to depict if whether these are shelf clouds or wall clouds so I'll give you a second here to think about the first one this feature looks to be moving toward the screen or toward the right portions of the screen and looks to be mostly outflow uh, dominated without any real visual clues here of any rotation so we'd go with a shelf cloud on this feature and then the second one and again no real visual signs of rotation here and you've got what looks to be the outflow portions of a storm moving toward the left side of the screen and being on the leading edge there so again we'd go with a shelf cloud in this instance and then finally the last image and here you've got the tail cloud on the right or the northeast side of the storm feeding in um, to this cloud and then also a little more um, circular in nature probably indicating um, some slight rotation potentially going on here so a wall cloud would be the most likely feature we'd be looking at in this image